we've just spotted a little water spout just off that uh, island through there. Not something we really want to be looking at. I don't know what's worse though, the water spout or this. And it suddenly got darker and the wind, as you might be able to hear, is just picked up. It's up to 30 knots now. Lots of white uh, crest on the way. Listen to that wind. Alright, we stopped here at Darby Key and we're trying to get into this area. It began with selling our previous boat and taking that money to buy tools and build a shed. We assembled keel pieces, poured the ballast, and raised all 16 frames in the first six months. There's a boom there. Now, half a decade later, and at a slower but steady pace, we're in the water. Hello everyone, thank you for tuning in. We thought this week we'd have a little change of pace and uh, we thought we would go through some of the boat life lessons that we learned the hard way so that perhaps some of you don't have to. Welcome to our self-inflicted adventure. What seems like a lifetime ago, we left Australia intending to sail our way around the world. It's been a roller coaster since then and while the plan has changed many times, we've been laughing our way through and learned a new lesson for every step of the way. Between us, the real adventure is only just Nick, do you feel like we're back in college now? Yeah. <laughs> white sand beaches, more palm trees. But in this episode, we're going to share more of what we do on Florence to get here. Specifically, how we use the biggest and most difficult to handle sail on Florence. In this video, we're going to share with you how we use our asymmetric spinnaker from the hoist right through to the drop and some of the tips and tricks that we've used to make it easier. Taking a pound in there. Take a look. Ah, this thing should be closed. So I'm making some chicken and um, put this in the potatoes, Indian food, stuff in there, see how that tastes. Looks good, it smells pretty good. And look, I even got a hose, I can hose off the boat. You haven't been cleaning in a while, Pickle. Hopefully this trip will work really well and it just comes easy. <laughs> We are Brett and Jade Evans. We decided to go for our dreams and purchase the direct sailboat. We're working hard to restore it and to document the journey with new episodes every week. Subscribe and join us on our greatest expedition yet.
Three years ago, we bought our boat off Craigslist for $5,000. I'm Kristen, and this is Matt. We are known to break the rules and do things a little less traditional. Join the adventure. Thanks to our patrons for keeping us going. What's up guys? So the title is not clickbait. We are giving away our sailboat, the one right behind us, to one of you guys for free. The idiot bird sat right next to the wind generator because of the, the cap. Oh no, no. If I scare him off, I'm frightened he'll leap up into the blades. The uh, stay sail up at the moment, uh, just flopping about there. It's completely and utterly windless and it has been for hours. I've taken all the other sails down. Um, it's not too bad now. And then you suddenly get big old swell coming through and she's rocking and rolling, there you go. So what do you think, number one? I'm just trying to get some sleep. I know, you're tired. Just don't die on my boat like your brother did. My brother's dead, oh no. I got the coffee this morning, cracking on, trying to keep motivated, get the job done. Call might not be so good. Sailing clothes hauled. But he's surely not bad. Sailing downwind. With his little twink heels. Ooh, ooh. Hi, my name's Colin. I used to be a chief engineer on super yachts, but gave it all up to buy a hurricane damaged Lagoon 450. My friends and I are fixing it up as we go, and are determined to circumnavigate the entire planet. So subscribe if you want some inspiration to live life to the fullest. 20 years from now, you will be more disappointed by the things you didn't do than by the things you did. So what are you waiting for? I'm a Canadian girl who plays gypsy jazz violin, has always dreamed of sailing around the world, and who became a first-time sailboat owner at age 18, when a wooden sailboat was given to me for one dollar from some random strangers I've still never met. This is Aladino, a Swiss and Italian dreamboat who can fix anything, bike the length of continents, and build boats out of piles of bones. This is Magic Carpet, the boat that fell 20 feet from a crane onto concrete, had her hull smashed to pieces, stern completely blown off, mast dented, interior destroyed, and now looks like this. For all three of us, sailing is our plan A. There's always this tug at my heart whenever I see a boat sails full gliding past the beach. Seems like owning a boat is more work than sailing. No one ever told us that. Wait, everyone told us that. <laughs> we just didn't listen. It's funny because we bought a boat that was in great condition. So I think we both thought like, yeah, we did good. We bought a boat that was ready to go. Yeah. 
We don't have to do too much. Boats quickly fall apart if you aren't constantly working on them. Yeah. Or if they're struck by lightning. Fortunately, the rig and hull were fine, and most of the damage was limited to our electronics. My name is James Evenson. I'm a mechanic, a musician, and a round the world sailor. Four years ago, I'd sold everything and made some interesting life choices. I bought a catamaran, built a hardtop, sailed to Cuba, painted shark's teeth on the front of the cat, lost a rudder, built a rudder in a shed, lost the other rudder, built a rudder on the beach, dressed in drag, made coffee in a sock, dressed in drag again, sailed to Easter Island, sank the dinghy, sailed to Pitcairn, sank the dinghy again, sailed to French Polynesia, sank the dinghy one more time, got a new dinghy. I meant to do that. Sailed to Hawaii. Shipwrecked in Hawaii. Rode the catamaran down the street at 3 o'clock in the morning. Wrote some magazine articles. Started a Kickstarter campaign. Flew to Curacao. And now, finally grinding my way back to life on the water. My next adventure. Try again! For those of you that are new here, our boat Marul is a Clansman 30. She's a fiberglass 30-foot masthead sloop built in New South Wales in 1969. Troy bought her seven years ago in Cairns and sailed her around the top of Australia all the way to Perth. Three and a half years ago, we sailed north from Perth to circumnavigate the Australian continent together, filming our cruising adventures and attending to any essential maintenance along the way. We are currently in lockdown in Tasmania, the southernmost part of the continent, where we've decided to carry out a long overdue reading. Well, I don't think I've lost my muscle memory too much, a little bit, but this will come back quickly. What's gonna take a little bit longer is the skin on my fingers. We started the engine and unplugged the shore power. Continuing north and going all the way up to uh, Viken Bay, we will do some uh, boat projects. Almost 15 uh, nautical miles. We'll be in westerly winds today.
a hammerhead, one of the most exciting animals to encounter under the water. Unexpected, silently moving in its habitat, it will make the delight of any diver. The joy, the adrenaline and the excitement that you feel is priceless. What is also priceless are these two salty sailors asking this question of who were it better? This is the story of a sailboat named Sylvia and the ragtag crew that call her home. Join us each week as we explore our planet both above and below the surface. Find out what it's really like to live This is Expedition Drenched. Welcome to Lazy Gecko Sailing. I'm Brittany and this is Jeremiah. For five years, we've been sailing the world and filming it all for you. Now come along with us as we head for the Caribbean. We are passing under Five Mile Bridge right now near Isla Morada. We are going to hook a left and head to Biscayne Bay. Okay, there's the old bridge there underneath. Matt and Jessica. After eight years of the nomadic lifestyle, sailing the world, refitting an aluminum boat, and then sailing the world again, we've decided to stop once more to build a brand new catamaran. We've just sold our last boat, and now we're on the hunt for the perfect build site, meeting up with friends and touring other boats along the way. Subscribe, and thanks for joining our adventure. I haven't been sleeping since Sailor's Fjord. 50 hours of constant sailing. Our needs can be very different depending on whether we live at sea or on land, but the fact remains, even as some of us do migrate to the sea, we enjoy to take a lot of our land-based conveniences with us. But what about if you live like we do and carry power-hungry computers, refrigeration, navigation electronics, cameras, drones, accessories, all those complementary things that come with one particular need, power. All right, it's day two here in Panama, Calamia. And this morning, the boys are heading out and doing some tuna fishing. And you guys are? We are going scuba diving, looking for whale sharks. Today I'm going to embark on my first solo trip. It's going to be maybe three or four days. Um, today I'm only going to be going about 25 miles. It should take me like four and a half hours. Um, so I'm going to be leaving Beaufort, North Carolina, where I'm at right now. And I'm pretty nervous. Welcome to Sailing Vessel Seeker, SV Seeker. That's the big boat back behind me. You ever been to a big boat launch? Put it on your calendar. August 21st, Tulsa, Oklahoma. We're gonna put this thing in the water and sail it to the ocean. Yeah, I know what you're thinking. Sail it to the ocean from Tulsa, Oklahoma? No way, yes way. The Tulsa Port of Catoosa is also celebrating their 50th anniversary here. Yeah, we're connected to the ocean. And in this video, we're overhauling our crane, which is gonna mount right here extend out that way and lift research projects in and out of our cargo hold.
The spring weather in Norway is quite unpredictable, so I spend a lot of time in the very few protected anchorages along the coast. So, of course, it is snowing. And in front of me there should be some mountains, but can't see anything at the moment, even though it's only one mile away. There's a shark swimming behind my boat. I don't, I don't know if you can see it through the water. But it's kind of just following in my slipstream and skating back and forth. Now it's right behind the boat. It's not that big. It's probably only four or five feet, I would say. So cool. It's so beautiful. And I'm so excited. There's birds everywhere. And the wind is beautiful and strong. And the waves aren't too big. And I'm just cruising at five or six knots. Which, for my little boat, is a great speed. So... That's a good sign. Waves are picking up a little bit. Wind is picking up a little bit. Airing out my sheets while I have some nice weather. And wing and wing with a big heady up. Everything is really happy too. And you should see this storm that is coming in. It is massive. Oh, so black. So we were going to go up on a movie today. So we're going to stay on the boat and we're going to just brace ourselves for this thing and hopefully this afternoon we can get into Clifton and uh, put up this video. Oh no! Six knots, twenty-seven knots, twenty-seven right now. The problem is it's pushing us into the reef. 